and you go through this lovely little town with all these churches, and then on the outside of Port Gibson, you, you can turn to the right and get back on the trace again. Perfect. You do have a trace map, I know. Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what a beautiful road that is, too. It's, it is. Whenever I go on it, I always think about sending a letter to my senator saying, I'm so glad you all do this. Yeah. But I never do that. But anyway, I think. Previously on For Travel's Sake, we were camped along the White River near Cotter, Arkansas, where we did a little fishing and floated the river in the rain. We had a visit from our niece Amanda, and we rescued a cat. Or did he rescue us? Shortly after arriving in Arkansas, an old friend invited us out to see his ancestral home deep in the Ozark Mountains. The property had been in his family for several generations. It had once comprised over 10,000 acres and included a thriving little town with a gas station, store, school, and a popular railway inn. These days, he uses the property as a retreat from his busy life in California. Even on a gray autumn day, the old place was cozy and warm and brimming with history. We explored the rocky stream that flowed through the property and promised to come back someday and stay longer and do a little fishing. Before leaving the Ozarks, we returned to the Buffalo National River to see something we'd missed on our previous visit. Deep in the park is an ancient rock shelter called the Indian Rock House. The sheer size and scale of the shelter is impossible to grasp until you see it in person. A crystal clear stream flows through the shelter. Its gurgling water mimicked the sound of children laughing and talking. The constant echo of the young voices filled the rock shelter, like the voices of the spirits of native children that once inhabited these mountains. At sunset on our last day on the White River, the Ozark mountain skies put on one last show for us. It was hard to leave the White River, but we knew it was time to continue our journey.
near Tupelo, Mississippi, we turned off the interstate and onto the 444-mile-long historic Natchez Trace Parkway. This quiet two-lane parkway follows the historic old Natchez Trace through three states from Nashville, Tennessee to Natchez, Mississippi. Just off the trace and near our campground, we visited the tiny village of Van Vliet, Mississippi. And although the name was spelled incorrectly, I was sure I was the only Van Vliet in Van Vliet that day. We made a side trip to see the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway, linking the Mississippi and Ohio rivers with the Gulf of Mexico. It may also play a role in our future travels. That's all we'll tell you about that right now. The old Natchez Trace had been a migratory route of the American bison and Native Americans for thousands of years. When Europeans arrived, they used the trail for early exploration and settlement. In the mid-19th century, rivermen would float their wares by flatboat down the Mississippi for sale in New Orleans and Natchez, then return north on the Trace, often on foot. Along the parkway, vestiges of the old trace have been preserved. Their depth attests to the amount of traffic that once traveled this ancient path. Today, the Natchez Trace Parkway is the ideal route for anyone traveling south from Tennessee to Louisiana who isn't in a hurry. With a speed limit of 50 miles per hour and restrictions on commercial vehicles, the Natchez Trace is a scenic and historic route through the heart of the American South. Near the southern end, of the Natchez Trace Parkway, we stopped to visit the Mount Locust Plantation, one of the oldest structures still standing along the trace. Begun in 1780, Mount Locust served as a homestead, then an inn for travelers and boatmen returning north along the Natchez Trace. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Join us next time when we visit the Vicksburg Civil War battlefield. Tour the USS Cairo, a preserved ironclad steamboat. Stop in downtown Vicksburg to see the Lower Mississippi River Museum and board a retired towboat, where I imagine being the captain of the vessel. We walk around Natchez and sample the local barbecue. We visit an antebellum mansion that was never completed. 
and we drive into the fog to locate a lovely old queen who has fallen on hard times. <laughs>